Hello and welcome back to Yukumo Village. So here we are and we are about to talk to 10,000 different people that have new speech bubbles now. So here, um, yep, we took care of the noisy Kurobeko, uh-huh. Alright, uh, yeah, the poor dude. Alright, okay, so here, Aqua Glow Jewels. Mm -hmm. So basically, right now, after the second star village quest is com are completed, you are now able to access the ability to create jewels or decorations, whatever you call them. So basically, decorations um, allow you to um, give your items extra skills. Like as you can see in the equipment here, some of this has this single singular slot. Some have up to three, as a maximum is three. So you can put in these decorations, and they will be able to give you um, skills, like as in here, as you can see. So having attack go up to say 15 points or 20 points would give you attack M and attack L in increasing order. And uh, if I get recovery speed up to 15, then it will be recovery speed plus 2. If I have things like, um, any, if I have any skill that does not reach the threshold of let's say in this case, minus 10, I will actually not have the effect. So. If my recovery speed were to be 9 here, I wouldn't have the recovery speed plus 1. And if this were to be, let's say, 8, I would not have like 80% of attack up small. I would have nothing at all. So that's just a quick rundown on how skill points work in this game. And let's see what she has to say. So we've defeated, defeated the Kuropeko. New quests in the desert island. Yep, really lovely, but of course, more monsters. Tundra is a ice cold plane. Don't forget to bring hot drinks. Uh huh. So. Yeah, get charms, which we already talked to the blacksmith about. And so yes, we received this bishop talisman, and I'm not even going to bother and check it because it is going to be the auto guard talisman, which has received a lot of many different discussion about it. So um, let us take down the great Rogi for the first three star village quests, and in fact. We should be bringing some antidotes. I forgot to bring any of them. Whatever! YOLO! <laughs> well, basically we are still in low rank, so I'm pretty sure the um, supply box will provide us with it. So yeah, there we go, antidotes. So the Great Rogi is um, basically like a cousin of Jagi, and he is able to shoot poison, poison clouds. He's also able to call for help, and he's equally annoying, if not more. So here we go. Um, there should be a... Oh, these are the smaller Rogis, if you have yet to realize. So I'm not sure where he, where the cutscene would activate, but... Um, let me just... Alright, since the Jagi started off in his den, I'm just going to assume that this guy is going to start off in his den as well. And this guy's den is in Area 10. So, yeah, let's just hit right there and not waste any time. Okie dokie. Just gonna run past all of those. Alrighty, so we are nearly there. Just gonna pick up this right before we go in. Scatter nut. Ah, uh, I don't really need nuts. Nuts are mainly for crafting ammunition for bow guns. And a bow is not a bow gun. Hi, Banabra. Goodbye, Banabra. Okay, is there? Oh, there's a cutscene. Ah, there we go. So, here's the great Rogi. As you can see, his throat is. Ex yep, it's like a frog, it can expand. And when it does, you know for sure that he's about to spit poison clouds at you. There we go. It's kinda. kinda disgusting. Like a poisonous spit. And oh, the poor dude is dead. Poisoned to death. Uh, okay, so, here we go, Great Rogi. Drawing my bow, Wait, where are you going? I'm here, ow, that was close. Um, so basically you can break the poison sack on his uh, throat, and when you do so, the poison clouds his speed, his speeds will not be as large, which is a good thing, so more chances of avoiding them. Because, there we go, there's, it's quite a huge cloud as you can see. 
it's so thick that and it, it persists for quite a while as well. It makes it kind of hard to see through the cloud. Ah oh, damn, I, sh I, I shot my own cat. I'm sorry. Oh gosh, no! No! Oh, wow! At, at least I didn't get hit into the cloud. Okay, okay. I, oh, nope, nope. Oh my gosh. Why Why the body blocks? I'm just gonna rain down some arrows and hopefully clear out the trash. The trash. Some of the trash. Uh, he's angry. I'm not ang uh, I'm, I'm not, like, you know, particularly happy or angry. Just get out of my way, small one. I can't see him. <laughs> just gonna rain the arrows and hopefully hit something. Oh my gosh, all the clouds. Uh, just gonna rain some arrows. Nope. So as you can see, his behavior is very similar to a Juggy in terms of his attack patterns, with the exception that he is able to speed the poison clouds, which Juggy is not able to. Yeah, and there is also a sort of an ice type variation of the Great Rocky, um, which you will see in maybe the four star quest. If I'm not wrong, I'm not too sure. For those of you who know, then good for you. For those of you who don't, then yeah, it will be a nice addition to the Bird Wyvern family. Uh, in terms of your knowledge base. Uh, not that this kind of knowledge is really worth knowing. I mean, it's a game, but... Geek! Never mind. Alright, so... A buff from Avanco, very nice. And that cloud just barely went past me. Okay, that tail sweep was dangerous, but not too bad. Alright. Ah, he hit his, his throat, come on. Get, get the poison. No, I'm not out. Crap, I got, I got hit by the poison. I should antidote myself up. Yep, he's angry, so. Okay, I should be fine still. He's probably gonna, is he? Oh, he's not gonna run away yet. I thought he would be. Nope, no bitey biteys. Okay, just, ah, crap, missed the throat. Yeah, I'm just gonna read some arrows and hopefully get rid of- No! Oh gosh, that was close. No! Ah! Stop it! No! No! Not again! This is honestly quite challenging. Oh yeah! Knock down! Let's just rain more arrows down upon him. Nice bomb! Oh wow, that's a pretty small hit you have there. Oh gosh, my aim is so bad. Oh, oh my gosh! I totally did not see that one coming because literally it was out of my screen. I'm not so worried about the poison from the small guys because they are less potent than the Great Rogi's one. They shouldn't last as long and they shouldn't do as much damage. And I think I broke the throat. Yes, I probably did. There's a shiny on the ground right there. And as you can see, his throat has like little holes on it now, which actually looks quite disgusting, but um, well, too bad for him. He's going to run away, and I forgot to paintball him as usual. I oh wait no, he's just gonna eat stuff. All right, never mind. I'm I'm gonna paintball him first. Oh my gosh, I missed. Nope, scrap. Okay, anyways, he's gonna eat and try and recover his stamina, which he did, and I just missed that very easy. Oh my gosh, the rocky, please, please, please. Okay, he's gonna shoot more. Oh 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 oh. Wow, I completely didn't need to use that paintball. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna backtrack right there and get a shiny first in case it expires. And after that, I'm gonna hit back to carve him up. No worries. So the shiny drops are usually obtained or dropped by the monster when um, you break a certain part, when you stagger him a certain number of times, or basically. Just do damage. <laughs> Just do damage to the monster and one way or another it's it's gonna drop. So only a maximum of of two if I'm not wrong can drop per monster. So yeah. As and oh yeah, you can see very clearly now his throat is clearly broken or damaged. So too bad he couldn't really speak poison and you know allow you to make the comparison, but well well. Gonna cover up this small one as well because why not? Free stuff. Froggy Fang. Not sure how useful is that. 
and uh, yeah, quest clear. I'm gonna grab all this stuff. Oh, I keep missing out this last one. Okay, there we go. So that's Rocky added into the list, and yes, I would like to save. And so before going off, let's do one more. One more quick one where we shall introduce to you all the Lagombi. So the Lagombi has been uh, featured on my Tumblr post quite a while back, so you can go take a read on it. And basically the Lagombi is essentially a giant war rabbit. You could call it that way, the war rabbit or yeah, I prefer to call it the Urukusu because it sounds way more familiar to me. I mean, uh, not familiar, but it just sounds cuter. <laughs> in any case, so this is also the first time our hunter sets, uh, Rakuhara sets foot in the tundra. So it's a very icy cold place, and as usual, I'm just gonna rely on the storage boxes to provide me with hot drinks. <laughs> Here we go, hot drinks. Um, grab the paintballs as well, rations. Uh, first aid mat. Sonic bombs, yes! Alright. As you know, the Lagombi has uh, very long ears, like, like all rabbits do. And they have pretty much superior sense of hearing compared to humans. So, later on, we shall be using that as a weapon against it. As in its, its superior hearing, that is, against itself. So if I remember correctly, it starts off in area 2 or 3 where there will be a cutscene introducing the Lagombi's ecology. So is this it? Yes, is it. As you can see, the tundra is, is quite a barren land with lots of ice, and the Rukusu is able to run freely and slide like a penguin. So its plastron, or essentially its um, belly piece, is very much designed to be like a penguin's. So you can basically slide around the ice very easily to capture prey. Although I'm not sure, I can't remember if it's, if it's a herbivore or a carnivore, but yeah. So the breakable parts of the Lagombi is only the head, the ears. So it behaves very much like in the oh, sorry, the Azuros, in which they are both um, beast type creatures, beast type monsters. And oh crap, that missed. So yeah, it. Oh gosh, the snowballs. These snowballs that he throws are really dangerous for um, classes like dual blades or bow because it gives you ice blight. And ice blight basically whoa, makes you use up stamina way way more quickly than usual. Why are you continuously in that corner man? Come on out. Oh gosh. So yeah, he's a, a simple four-limbed creature and gets angry like that pretty much like how Azuros does things, so I'm here I'm going to demonstrate how the Sonic Bomb does its work. So by throwing it close by, oh wow I missed, oh great crap. Um, where you? Okay I'm just going to make sure it's right in its face, here. Oh no it didn't work! Oh does it only work when it's not angry? Oh crap I just wasted both the Sonic Bombs. No! Wow that was close. So supposedly, if you do it right, he would flinch because the sound is way too loud for his ears. And he likes doing that. Um, oh, there we go, his ears are broken. So his ears, uh, unlike your typical rabbit at home, if you do have a pet rabbit, um, it's not soft, it's made out of like, armor-like scales, I suppose. So they can be broken. Nope. Yes. So Lagombi can only do that for a maximum of three times. Um, but there are times where he chains like 2 and 2, so it makes it 4, but it's it's actually 2. Oh my gosh, that was close. Oh, actually I got hit. Ow! Damn! Is he gonna do it again? Nope, he's not. Ah, oh, but so far. I'm just gonna... That, that didn't even reach him. Oh god. Oh my gosh. I got finished coming. Yep, he is. And... Is he gonna do it a third time? He probably is. I'm far enough to just not need to dodge that. Oh, flinch. So his plus drawn um, cannot be broken, sadly. It looked like it could have been. And 
As you can see over there in the background, there's some couple of blue juggy like things running off the place. That is also a similar that is also similarly a relative of the Jaggi, which is similar to Rogi as well. Um, it is a buggy. Yeah, the, the name is kind of weird. It's not B U G G Y. It's B A G G I. Um, I it is oh crap. So basically, similar to uh, Jaggi and Rogi, it's um, its behavior is quite pack like They have an alpha as well, which is also a great something in that sense, so it's a great buggy in this one. And the great buggy, uh, or buggies in general, they are able to shoot s uh, spit stuff, similar to the Rogi, but they don't spit poison clouds, they spit sleep clouds. And I mean sleep clouds, like basically um, they spit out chemicals and uh, stuff that make your hunt makes your hunter or your makes their prey or makes the cats feel sleepy and Yep, go to sleep. So it's a... Sorry, amp, amp, ouch. I, I can't even get the words right. It's ambush? No, I don't think it's ambush, but... Oh crap, come on. No more snowballs, please. It basically makes his prey fall asleep before attacking it, which is quite interesting. Okay, so... It's similar to how spiders immobilize their prey and before for getting their prey, I guess, but um, yeah. So let us put on and then press on the chase and get the Lagombi. The Lagom, the, 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 the my my tongue is doing weird stuff again. So the Lagombi is um, yep, he's betting right now. And if I remember correctly, it's a. Well, I really can't remember. Is it insectivore, or carnivore, or herbivore? Shites. I have to go and check it out. Or shall we just, you know, wait and let him go to eat? Uh, I'm not sure. I honestly not too interested right now because he is going to throw snowballs at my face. That was close. Oh come on! Stop throwing snowballs. Either go to eat or just die. And he's gonna roll around and fall. Or is he not? But he's honestly quite fatigued. And he's still throwing snowballs. He is annoying. Uh, are you going to... Oh, there you go, he's gonna trip and fall. So, um, in caves, it's highly advisable to not use the arrow shower because there will be times where your, your the arrow that you launch, you launch up gets stuck on the ceiling. Like, it may hit the ceiling and it, it will not come down. <laughs> so, yep, just a little tip for people who like to use bows, like I do. You can use the arrow shower in case, I mean, nothing's stopping you, but if you realize that your, your rain is not coming down like it should be, so um, you should, you know, rely on normal shots instead, because, yeah, it's not going to come down. It's hitting the ceiling, and it's getting stuck up there. So the Lagombi is now heading to area 7, which I believe it's its resting spot, and not its eating spot. Or... Well, it's not very welcoming at all, completely. So that bear hug swipe, very similar to Azuros. Oh, I missed. Um, he fell over though. Just gonna shoot him in the butt and... He's flinched again. What's he gonna do is a bear hug swipe again. Oh and... Dang, the Gigi nearly got me. Just gonna... Hurry up and finish this hopefully. Oh, he's angry again. Oh dear shoot you in the face. Well, it's not too big of a threat, I feel, but the long, go the long, the, the Legombi can still be quite an ouch, a nuisance, um, when you pair him up with another monster, as in dual monster quests, because he moves around so quickly with that charge and all that shit, and so, yeah, he can be quite, quite terrible to fight against. Because if you're focusing on the other monster, and before you know it, he just comes around from behind and wham, you take a hit. Alright, so he went over to area 5. Let's see what's he up to there. Um, he's not dead, he's still throwing snowballs, and being generally angry and annoying. I would like to shoot his face. Oh, oh my gosh, would you? If, if he dies there, that would be really big trouble because I can't carve the items. 
Sometimes, oh wait, wrong button. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna ping so my cats come to my side. Yeah, basically pinging can be done, um, oh my gosh, by pressing uh, start followed by the top button, triangle. Where do you go? Oh, there, whoa. So, doing that basically um, notifies other hunters of something important, at least when you're playing multiplayer. You can, you can tell the other hunters like, hey, the monster is here, and they'll usually come. In single player, it um, notifies your cats to come to your side. Oh my gosh! Ow! Okay, that, that, that got me by surprise. So yeah. Okay, staggered him a little. He should be dying right about soon, like very soon. Come on, just let me finish you off. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so um, yeah, in uh, in the Japanese servers, at least as far as I know, people use ping to say thank you and things like that as well. So if you do all some awesome move like you, oh gosh, the Kiki. If you save someone by staggering the monster or like healing the guy up or something like that, um, they will. Oh gosh, another Gigi. They would ping to indicate um, their thanks, which is really sweet. So yeah. Anyway, this guy, these small little things, they are Gigi. And we will meet um, their parent in the future. So yeah, their parent is really quite hard to deal with. Well, not hard, but just annoying and uh. Just gonna wake up the Lagombi here. How dare he sleep in our video? How rude. Oh, there we go. He's dead. You don't even get a chance to roar. Ha! <laughs> so, anyway, yep. Just going to hard quickly um, gather his items before the, the black cats, the millings, come and interfere. So, these guys, um, they are similar to the feline companions, except that. They are exact, sort of like a different race or a different tribe. I'm not too sure exactly myself. And these guys, um, what they like to do is they are very religious. So they'll steal your items and bring it back to their their home uh, and put it in a shrine. So if you have ever have any items stolen, there are two ways where you can get it back. One is either you kill them, in which they don't actually die. They merely borrow back into the ground, uh, they borrow into the ground and return back to base. Uh, the second way is to basically just, uh, if you know the location of their their home in the particular map, you can just head over there, find their shrine, and your items will be there. And ah, dang it, I didn't get to pick up the shiny from the cat. So what they usually drop are like secret stashes or like round acorns, which if I remember correctly, they give you more Yukumo points and money. And um, nothing of great importance, but well, points are few points, I don't mind getting the points anytime. So yes, uh, more information, more updates. So right now, I'm just going to quickly purchase some upgrades for my farm. And I would like to show it to you guys. So I should have saved up quite a bit of points, and I would like to get the mushroom log which took out like freaking 5,000 points um, and the prototype beehive because honey is important so let us take a quick look before we call it a day and here we go the prototype beehive right over there with a singular bee um, that's pretty sad but still better than nothing so the beehive obviously produces honey for us and honey can be used in conjunction with potions to make mega potions and yep, so this is my farm. It hasn't, it hasn't changed since um, the last time you saw it. And what I'm really looking forward to is the ore mining upgrades. I'm really saving points for this because ores are really, really important for upgrading weapons as well. So anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as well. Leave a comment, subscribe, like. That will all help me very much and it's very motivating as well. So thank you all and... MHK signing out. Have a great one.